Happy Thanksgiving and uh, welcome to our Bible study here at uh, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day, um, a time with uh, family and friends, or at the very least, uh, cuddling up with a nice uh, turkey and, and pumpkin pie. Uh, today our Bible study is Philippians 4, 4 to 13. Um, and before we begin our study, we have our prayer. It's the prayer of general thanksgiving uh, that comes from Portals of Prayer for October through uh, December. And so we pray. All praise be given to you, dear Father. Thank you for temporal blessings, food and drink, the warmth of house and home, friends and family, and even the change of seasons. Thank you especially for the living waters in Christ through your word and sacrament, for the family of grace, his church, and for spiritual blessings that come from you. May our lives reflect the thankfulness of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, well, let's get right to it today. Um, something to, to study before, maybe uh, take your nap from, from your turkey. Uh, so it begins with a wonderful passage. It was our theme uh, verse for this year, a good shepherd, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So Paul's encouragement to peacekeeping led him to point to an important part of the dynamic of making peace. What does it mean to rejoice in the Lord? Rejoice in the Lord always. Well, rejoicing in the Lord as we are, are doing today and every day is letting his love and peace pervade and transform every circumstance of life. And it means that we are the Lord's. And uh, because we are uh, created, redeemed, and, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit, uh, we know that, that we are loved and that God provides for us and takes care of us. So we rejoice in the Lord, that he is our, our God, and that he loves us and, again, uh, is providing for all our needs of body and soul. What impact was added to his friends in Philippi by the fact that Paul wrote this encouragement to rejoice while he was in custody awaiting trial in Caesar's court? Well, it's just that firm reminder that uh, we have is that we live in the world but not of the world. Paul's Worth and joy was not found in worldly things, but in the Lord and the Lord first and foremost. And so he could rejoice no matter what his circumstance was because he was forgiven. And that he knew that by faith um, he uh, was heaven bound. So even in the darkest of circumstances, we look up, we remember uh, what Christ has won for us, that we are forgiven um, and that when we die, we will live with the Lord forever. And furthermore, that God is with us uh, throughout all of our lives in the, in the valleys and also as we are on the hilltops, the difficult and trying times. So there is reason to rejoice and, and to greatly rejoice uh, in the Lord. Let your reasonably, reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. How does the fact that the Lord's return is near encourage us to gentleness in our dealings with others, yielding our rights rather than insisting on them? Well, we know that he is coming soon. We don't know when, uh, but he has promised that. So as we um, know this uh, possibly immediate time frame, uh, we don't agonize on what is uh, right before us because we know what is coming soon. And so living in anticipation of his coming, we recognize that what we have or don't have here is rather inconsequential. And we see that in our lives as, um, you know, we have things and then they fade away. Then we have other things and then they fade away. Things come and go in our lives. But that which is eternal uh, is yet to come, but we know it is ours uh, because of Jesus. So, um so yielding our rights may be inconvenient or irritating here. However, uh, in view of what awaits us in heaven, it doesn't really matter. Um, how can I be of service to you? I'm a servant of the Lord, awaiting uh, to be with the Lord forever, who served us first. So let's be reasonable. Let's uh, be those who are servants and who use our, our gifts to be a blessing to others. That's a, certainly a source of rejoicing in the Lord and reminder of the joy that is ours uh, in Jesus. And so this is a uh, 4.6, do not be anxious about anything then, right? 
Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your reasonableness uh, be evident. So don't be anxious. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So Paul wrote, do not be anxious about anything. Anything. We need to emphasize that. Uh, the Greek word for anxious carried the idea of a mind being drawn in different directions, not focused or assured. We all know what that is. What does Paul prescribe for anxiety, but in everything in prayer and supplication? Uh, cast our concerns over to the Lord now, because he cares about us. And rejoice that because God cares for us, he is answering our prayers what is best for our lives whether it's a yes or a wait or even a no uh, we don't need to be anxious because god loves us you know and because he loves us um, we can count on everything uh, working toward uh, our good now we may not necessarily understand the good we may struggle in finding it uh, but but ultimate good is that he has redeemed us and that this life is indeed temporary um, as we await our eternity with the Lord. So how will our consciously giving thanks to God influence our whole outlook on life? Well, Christians should be people, I think, of joy more than not. Um, if we are people who are, are downcast and who are negative people, um, how can we truly believe that God loves us and that he is in control and are in charge? So giving thanks is an exercise that influences our whole perspective. I give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Um, we give thanks for each and every day. So we focus on the blessings rather uh, than the circumstances that trouble or threaten us. Um, and it doesn't mean we're minimizing those things, but we know that God has them in control. And so that gives us reason also to give thanks. Give thanks that someone far power, more powerful than me is no wood knows what he's doing he's in control and in charge therefore what can i do you know sometimes so much of our anxiety is dealing with circumstances that are out of our control which kind of makes sense right that's where our anxiety comes from and yet god is in control so just you just need to let that marinate uh, just like sitting on the couch after a thanksgiving big meal let it marinate let it dwell in you Oh, that's right. God's in control. Therefore, you know, I do not need to be afraid. I don't need to be anxious. And the peace of God. So this is the result, of course, of uh, the anxiety removed. The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding. So we're trying to navigate all of this and figure it out ourselves. And in our wisdom and in our actions, we're falling short. But then there's God. And when we live by faith, the peace of God, over, you know, overcomes us, overshadows us envelops us, covers us, and we are we are truly not worrying. Uh, we'll guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. So, see, Paul is serving as an example, what you've learned and seen from me. The way Paul's approaching his prison uh, time uh, is going to affect and uh, alter the way that um, these disciples will approach their suffering and persecution for the name of the Lord. Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Paul has this peace. He has assured them that this peace will also be theirs. God's provision. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. So, so think about that, right? This is the broad part here. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger abundance and need i can do all things through him through him notice through god who strengthens me what a wonderful blessing that is so the result of building our lives on thanksgiving is that we are continually focused 
on the fact that God is at work in everything for our good. So the result is that the peace of God, again, which surpasses all our understanding because we're just going, you know, focusing on what we can handle, what we can manage, and what we can control. But when we can't, and we shouldn't, uh, because God is the author of our lives and over all things, you know, we can have peace and be thankful. Uh, it, it surpasses our understanding, our wisdom. will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In other words, God doesn't want this anxiety or worry to uh, pull us away from him. So we are guarded uh, through his word, through the encouragement of one another, um, to what he has done for us by grace through faith, so that we stand firm in our faith, confident of our relationship with him. The peace that God offers is the assurance that we can have Christ that nothing in all creation can separate us from his love. And that's Romans chapter 8, 2, 31 to 39, a good reference point there. It doesn't seem that the way at times when we take a logical view of things, of course not. But if we go beyond understanding to faith and trust that is based solely on the surprising gospel of Christ, we find that the Spirit builds a surpassing peace of God in our hearts and lives. Um, I think this is, a, a, a you know, Bible studies are important. It seems in our world today, especially following the election and all the other things that take place within our world, as I take a deep breath even thinking about it, you know, we have peace. And we need to share this these words with others. We need to encourage others. And this Thanksgiving, remember uh, God who loves you, who's created you, redeemed you, sanctified you. Uh, remember uh, heaven that is before you. Don't let the things of this world uh, take you away from the Lord, but stand firm in faith and confidence uh, through his word and through the encouragement of the church and the encouragement of these Bible studies that we get to have together weekly. So happy Thanksgiving again. I hope you have a wonderful day, whatever it may be. Be safe as you're traveling. Um, enjoy some time away from work and, and sometimes the anxieties of this world. And use this opportunity as you go back into life uh, to remember to rejoice in the Lord always. So thanks again for joining me today. May God richly bless your day. Uh, again, if you have any questions about any of our Bible studies, please let me know at uh, Good Shepherd uh, Lutheran Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh, you can see our contact information there. So again, happy Thanksgiving and thanks for joining me. God richly bless your day.